destination. Right. And uh, throughout the Bible, they, they talk about election and the elect, election, etc. Mm -hmm. Just exactly who are the elect? The elect is the church. Well, you know, throughout human history, the elect are those people that God chooses by whatever means at that time God uses to choose people. Like, uh, for example, uh, in, in, under the uh, law of Moses, the elect were the children of Israel. And at that time, God's means for uh, determining who was one of the elect or not was whether they were living under the law of Moses. And uh, 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 a stranger, that someone that wasn't born a Hebrew, could, could come into the uh, uh, Israelites by being circumcised and, and by observing uh, certain rites under the law. And from that point forth, they would be considered a, a Hebrew and they, be, they would become one of God's elect. Well, in the New Covenant, a person becomes one of God's elect when they hear the gospel and obey uh, the gospel. I can put a. I, I think I can put a passage up on the screen. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can put this up there. That's that's probably way too big to see on the screen. Let me let me uh, shrink that down some. I'm still uh, working on on my my screen sizes and and you know what what's the what's the right size to have or. You got just right. Let me put let me put that back out there and see if I can't work that out so that we can see it together. Okay, uh, let me put up there Second Thessalonians. Two thirteen. Okay, he says. Uh, but we are bound. Let me get over here so I can scroll down. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved uh, of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Okay, so that's 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 the elect. From the beginning, God has chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And so, how does God uh, how does God choose people? Well, through through the gospel, right? Whereunto He called you by our gospel, called you to what? Called you to election. And so, uh, today, people are the elect when they obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, phone lines are open, so I'm going to go back to the comments. And this was the last one I read here. Uh and he, he uh, makes the comment here about the once saved, always saved doctrine. Let me just uh, ob oblige him in reading the uh, last couple of verses of James. He says, uh, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him. Well, you know, according to once saved, always saved. Or what this guy, now, now he, says, he says, I don't like the term once saved, always saved. Uh, I like the term once saved, once saved, kept saved. Okay, well, whatever you like to call it, it's false either way. Uh, and, and, you know, if once saved, kept saved is true, if once saved, always saved is true, well, then how can you err from the faith? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, brethren, if any of you, uh, who? Any of you who? Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, that is, bring him back to the truth, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Great point. Th thank you for, for that point. Great point. What sense would those verses make if you couldn't err from the truth? If once, once you were saved, God kept you saved even against your will. God kept you saved so that you couldn't err from the faith. It's a great comment. Thank you. Now, here we go with some more really uh, just inane comments. Sir, I am sorry 
but my salvation is not of myself. Well, neither is mine. My salvation is of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, uh, he says, my salvation is not of myself. It is a work of God, and man can take no credit or glory from it. I have no problem with this statement at all so far. Okay? God is able to keep His children. I have no problem with that statement. What I have a problem with is the way he's applying it. That statement, I'm sorry, but my salvation is not of myself. Well, what are you sorry about? That's nothing to be sorry about. I'm saved by Jesus Christ. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I didn't do anything to save myself. Jesus Christ is the one who shed his blood. God is the one that said, if I want to be cleansed in the blood of Christ, I've got to be baptized into Christ. God did that, not me. I obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I obeyed the work of God, and His blood cleansed me of my sins. Now, if all I did was obey what God told me to do, what kind of idiot would I be to say, yeah, that's of me? <laughs> it would, it'd be ludicrous. Well, this is what I said to him. What are you sorry about? Now, because I know how he's ply, uh, applying this, I wrote again, none of you have answered my question yet about 1 Timothy 2.4. The Bible clearly says that God desires that all men would be saved. Well, if it is totally up to Him who will be saved, then why won't everyone be saved? Which is what He desires. You see, how, how can they get around that? Well, you saw how the other guy tried to chase his tail around in a circle and say, well, because everybody's born, born sinful. What difference does that make? If God's the one that opens their eyes by giving them the Holy Spirit, what difference does it make if they're born sinful? I'm not saying they are born sinful. That's another false doctrine. Uh, but even if, even if people are born sinful, what difference does it make if God's the one who opens their eyes by the giving of the Holy Spirit? Because He desires all men to be saved. Well, none of them have answered that yet. No, they don't want to touch 1 Timothy 2.4 because they can't. Notice. The fact is, and the reason none of you have answered this, is that God's desire for us is to be saved. Uh, God, uh, God's desire for us to be saved is why He gave us the gospel of Christ. Now, it is us, uh, or that should be, it is up to us to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy or uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8, which says when Christ comes back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know not God, so that's one group, who know not God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the ones that don't obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they know God, but they don't obey Him. Well, well who is that? If it's just up to God to open their eyes by the giving of the Holy Spirit, who is that? God desires all men to be saved. Well, why doesn't He open their eyes by the Holy Spirit then? I beseech you, obey the gospel of Christ. That's all I want people to do is obey the gospel. Let me take another call. Go ahead, caller. You're live. Yes, you're, you're live. You're on the air. Yes, sir. I just had a few, a few questions about um, God testing people and stuff like that and testing the faith. I mean, I know this is not what this show is about, but... Okay. Like, I'm going through a situation right now, kind of... It's really kind of hard to explain. I've been separated for about a year. I uh, had two stepchildren taken away from me, put in DSS custody. And, uh, you know, it's... It, I've read the Bible and uh -huh. there's a test of Job and all that and well, sir, can I let me, let me just interrupt you real quick? I'm 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 very interested to talk with you. I do I do want to talk with you. Um, I, I I'm not sure that uh, uh, live on the air is the place for for us to get into a discussion of. Uh, your your trials and things. I would really love to discuss this with you and to help you uh, apply the Bible because you know whatever your trials are, the Bible is the answer. And I do want to discuss that with you. Can I put you on hold and and, and let Mark uh, get your contact information? And I will come see you and 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 we we will sit down together and discuss the Bible and and. Uh, uh, apply the Bible to your to your current situation, and I'll do everything I can to help you in your current situation. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me put you on hold. All right. Thank you, sir. Mark, can you get that, please? 
All right. Uh, you know, uh, folks, I, I really appreciate that call because the Bible is the answer. You know, for whatever whatever somebody is suffering, whatever somebody's going through, the Bible is the answer. And and uh, I, I'm.